Hello folks. Soon we're going to begin our study of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, praying 1, 2, 3 John. I hope you're planning to participate in our online study group. You would be a welcome addition to our group. In this video, I want to give you just a very brief introduction to 1st John. Of course, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John are some of the shortest letters in the New Testament. They have a lot in common. In fact, they have a lot in common with the Gospel of John. And that's one reason we think that all four books in the New Testament were written by the same author, the Apostle John. They were probably written in the mid-90s. But I want to talk about some more important matters regarding this letter as we introduce this great study. First of all, what is the purpose of this letter? Why did John write it? I think he gives us some clues in the letter itself. Notice chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. If you don't mind, let me read those verses for us. I am writing to you, little children. Doesn't that sound like the reason why he's writing? <laughs> I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young people, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young people, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Doesn't that sound like John wants to reassure his readers that they know God, that they've conquered the evil one, that they are right with God? And if that's not enough, take a quick peek at chapter 5 and verse 13, where John seems to clearly state his purpose in writing. Here's verse 13. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. John wants his readers to know that they have eternal life. So he wants to reassure his readers. Now, we might ask, why do they need that reassurance? Why is John so keen on assuring them of eternal life? And I think the answer must be that there were false teachers who were having contact with the Christians to whom John is writing. And these false Christians, no, these false teachers were challenging their salvation. Now, we read from chapter 2 and verse 19 that these had seceded from the church. They had left the church, but apparently they were still in contact with some of the members in the churches to whom John is writing, and they were causing some uncertainty among them regarding the true character of Christian belief. So, these false teachers had arisen, and they were causing these Christians to doubt that they had eternal life. What were some of the ideas of these false teachers? You know, to answer this question, all we really need to do is read through 1 John, and we get many clues as to what these false teachers probably believed and taught. For example, they claimed to have fellowship with God, chapter 1 and verse 6. They claimed to be without sin, chapter 1, verses 8 and 10. Perhaps they were claiming a moral superiority to others, sort of a Christian elitism. They said they knew God, chapter 2, verse 4, and they say that they love God, but they don't appear to love their brothers and sisters, chapter 4, verse 20. They claim to be in the light, chapter 2, verse 9, and yet they did not believe that Jesus was the Christ, chapter 2 and verse 22. They may not have believed that Jesus was the Son of God, chapter 2, verse 22, and chapter 5, verses 1 and 5. These false teachers likely denied that Jesus Christ had come in the flesh. Perhaps their view was that Christ was not a human being, but that he was a divine being. And being a divine being, he would not have been contaminated by the world or by sin. So according to chapter 4 and verse 2, actually they were denying that Jesus had come in the flesh and therefore were denigrating the significance of Jesus' fleshly life. What then is the basic issue in 1 John? We're going to say that one of the basic issues is salvation. Was Christ divine or not? Was Jesus human or not? How is one saved? 
Is one saved through Christ and having a relationship with him? Or is one saved by having some special knowledge that belongs only to a few? You can see why we say salvation is the chief issue in this letter. Let's talk briefly about what value there is in our studying the letter, because this is what we want to know, right? Why should we study 1 John? Well, do you stand in need of assurance of your salvation? Do you ever wonder or question if you are saved? I think all of us want to have the confidence and the assurance that we know God and the, that we are right with Him, that we have eternal life. And because we are similar to those first century readers who every now and then needed the assurance that we are saved, I think there's great value in reading this book. And what we learn when we read this book is what it really means to be a Christian, what it really means to be right with God. And I'm going to say it involves faith in Jesus, having a true belief in Jesus' identity. It involves loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. And it involves righteousness, that is, right living. Right living in which we resist sin and we try to live for God. Here's what it means to be a true Christian. And if we have these qualities in our lives, if we have faith in Jesus, and if we have love for our brothers and sisters, and if we are intent and persistent on right living, then John would tell us we have every reason in the world to be assured of our salvation. And that's good news, isn't it? I think so too. Assurance. It's a wonderful thing. We're looking forward to our verse-by-verse -verse study of 1 John, and I hope you're planning to join us. And if you haven't yet joined our online study group, here's what I want you to do. Go to Facebook, hashtag praying123john, that group will pop up, and you just need to ask to join the group. And if you need more instructions, please let us know. We'll be sending out, well, we've already sent out a reading schedule, but we'll make it available to you if you don't have it already. And our, we're, our plan is to start 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1 on Sunday, April the 29th. I hope you're planning to join us. We're going to have a great study together, and we're going to grow spiritually together. God bless you.